The Barbie movie was Buddhism. Barbie Land is the Buddhist realm of the gods, or the devas, where they have every opulent pleasure they can imagine, but they're also prevented from needing to do any spiritual work because everything's great. It's the epitome of ignorance is bliss. Now, I'm not going to explain Buddhism, but before he was the Buddha, Prince Siddhartha was in his own Barbie Land. Everything was perfect. He was protected from suffering until one day he saw death and he just couldn't look away. And that's what Barbie did too. When she's on the dance floor, she's like, does anybody think about dying? I was like, let's go. And of course, just like an ordinary everyday society, everyone's like, what the fuck? How dare you talk about that? We are happy here. Oh yeah, we're very happy here in an existentially devoid materialistic culture that conceals its own indigeneity in a cloud of rational arrogance. This is the best hero's journey movie I've seen in a while, following Joseph Campbell's monomyth, where the hero is challenged to leave the comfort of what's familiar, confront the problem of suffering, it's happening again. <laughs> and return with something they didn't have before. I love the twist on the Matrix moment, the refusal of the call to action, where instead of the pills, they had the Birkenstock and the Barbie shoe, and she's like, no, no, I don't, I, I don't want that. And Weird Barbie's like, you, you have to say yes. Now the hero always has to go through some rough shit before they reach apotheosis, or the highest crescendo of their development, and they have to descend into the underworld. And when Barbie sees what Ken has done to the, the whole space, eradicated everything that's familiar, her underworld is just sort of like going plastic mode, just kind of like lying face down on the floor. I mean, you might think you'd never want to end up here, but you, you do want to end up here because this is where we're freed from the just enormous weight of the sense of control and rigid structure and the flimsy strings with which we hold up what we think is our own well-being until we're just so overwhelmed by the weight that we just let go. Now, if you find yourself wondering why I'm applying the typically masculine hero's journey to a feminist film, I would actually argue that at the zenith of the hero's journey, all the masculine fighting stops and they actually reconcile with the eternal feminine, engaging in an act of pure surrender where they accept eradication of their ego or even death itself when they bow to the eternal Tao. If you strike me down, I shall become more powerful than you can possibly imagine. This is Encanto's Mirabelle softening her grip on her quest for superpowers and actually accepting what her powers are. This is Jesus on the cross saying, forgive them for they know not what they do. This is Neo surrendering to the machines so the eternal duality of good and evil can end and they can live in peace. Provided you ignore the fourth Matrix movie. Not long after Barbie reaches her atonement, with the creator or at one mint where Ruth appears like the she reappears the literal creator of Barbie and Barbie says this beautiful thing she says I don't want to be someone else's idea anymore I want to have my own ideas I want to create and this is a parallel to Vedic philosophy the roots of Hinduism where in waking up we realize I am not just the dreamed content I'm not just the self and ego I'm the dreamer in this beautiful symbolic moment, Barbie sort of disappears into the, the, you know, the eternal white Christed light of her own awakening. It's feminist in the sense that it's a, a call to wake up from the rigid confines of restraining roles we play in life. But that's the exact same message from the spiritual front. What if you are so much more than the rehearsed story in your head? And if you look inside, there is just a limitless potential for what you actually are. And it's time to stop playing small. For this movie to nail what it was going for, there was no way it was going to be something for everybody. It needed to oversimplify some of its tropes to really execute its main message. And speaking of oversimplifications, the way it handled men was, was to portray them as one-dimensional dummies. And it needed to do that for the film to work. Remember, like the very message of this is softening over rigid identification with what we swear we are so life can be more fun and playful and sincere and if anybody got really angry and stormed out of the theater they're probably the people who needed that message more than anyone look this movie is less about men and women and more about individuals who want to wake up from delusion and those who are committed to staying in darkness and it just so happened that men were the symbol for unconsciousness in this a part of people is probably really uncomfortable that the majority of people in North American culture are like Ken. 
they aren't connected to the deeper sense of what their purpose is, and so they try to kind of puff it up outward through some sort of superficial identification with like the least interesting parts of who we actually are. This film isn't going to flatter everybody's personality identification, but if watched deeper, it will give everybody an opportunity to wake up from the confines of our smaller selves. Shit, I hope they don't notice that I only briefly talked about Buddhism before shifting to a non-denominational focus on the general perennial tradition of spiritual awakening. All right, that's it. Please remember to hit the like, hit the subscribe button, hit the jubilation button. I'm just kidding, there is no jubilation button. That's not even a thing. I've emailed them requesting it for like 10 years. It's like after, there's a certain point you just kind of think like, is anybody even reading these?